Welcome, Algebra 1, to 1 1.3. It's your favorite math teacher, Mr. Stefan. Hey, y'all. Um, today, we're, gonna, we're just going to look at some properties of numbers. So, a lot of terminology here today. I don't really... I hate to say this, but I don't really care that you know the terminology that much other than us being able to talk about it. It's more important, most important, that you understand these rules. Okay, so when you hear the terminology, um, you know, I might not ask you what the reflexive property is, but I, I really care about the fact that you know that that rule exists. Okay, so we'll look at these today. Don't be too overwhelmed by the terminology. It's the rule is what is important. Okay, so... Here we go, let's get into these. So the reflexive, reflexive property, which I always get confused for some reason with the symmetric property, and that's okay, you might as well. But as long as you know that this rule is, exists and you know how to use it, that's all I care about. So the reflexive property just says, hey, if I have the same thing on either side of an equal sign, right, same thing on either side of an equal sign, um, that is known as reflexive, okay? If it's the exact same. Now. The symmetric property, and this is why I get these confused, says hey, if I have one thing on one side of the equal sign and another looking thing on the other side of the equal sign, then I can write those in either way. So notice, 8 is equal to 2 plus 6. If that is the case due to symmetric property, I can write that 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. I could just reverse it, right? So I, put, I ended up putting this over here and this 8 over there, right? And that means the same thing because, again, in equal sign, you guys, and I should hit this again, I guess, since I, um, well, whatever, yeah, so in equal sign. So in all of algebra, you can always think of this equal sign, you guys, as a balanced scale. I don't know if you've seen those scales where you have these, like, plates on either side. This is a very terrible drawing. Um, but, like... <laughs> It's one of these scales where like if you put like a if you put a cube on this side, obviously this thing's gonna drop, right? Since there's nothing on the other side. But um, with an equation, we will always have the same amount on both sides. They're balanced. Okay, an equation means something is balanced. When that equals when you see that equal sign, it means that this is what's happening. The visual is the scale, all right? So if I add or subtract something from one side of the scale, I gotta do it to the other side to keep it balanced. But anyway, symmetric just means it doesn't matter which side of the scale I give you first. I can talk about this side of the scale or this side of the scale. Symmetric property allows me to just flip those. doesn't really matter. Transitive property is, um, you know, if I have, I guess I'll use the example here. If I have 6 plus 9 uh, is equal to 3 plus 12, okay, if, if I know that. And then I also know that 3 plus 12 is equal to 15, this middle guy, which we, they call B here in this case, right? They just represent this middle guy with the letter B. We can do away with, right? Because those, are, those two things are equal, and we can just say, okay, this 6 plus 9 must equal 15. That's called the transitive property. And then uh, a couple more to get into your notes. The substitution property, again, most used in algebra, uh, if A equals B, then it can be replaced by B. A can be replaced by B in any expression. Uh, that just means this. Say, for instance, that I know that N is equal to 11, right? And then I have this problem. 4N equals 4 times 11. By the way, that X, I think I had to put in there. I should use parentheses. That's, that's just wrong, even though, well, it's okay since they're numbers. But shouldn't be using X because we're in algebra, right? But anyway, um, so what I can do is I can replace this in here with 11, right? So I could say 4, we'll do it with parentheses instead of that guy, times 11. All right, so that's called the substitution whenever we do that. Uh, we're going to skip the partner exercise for now, but hey, uh, can you figure these out? Okay, this is like no-brainer, right? 100 plus 0 equals 100. Since the original value 100 does not change when I add 0 to it, I call this the identity property. So notice it's a little different. We add 0 or subtract 0 for identities uh, for dealing with addition. But for multiplication, when I go to multiplication, if I start with 100 and I want 100 out, 
if I multiply it by zero, I'd get zero, which is different. Okay, so in multiplication, the multiplication identity is multiplying by one. Okay, so the additive identity just means I can add zero to anything and get the same thing out. The, the multiplicative identity is I can multiply anything by one and get the same thing out. Okay, those are identities. And I know I'm moving fast, but hopefully you're pausing the video and taking some good notes. Uh, these, uh, notice what I'm doing here. I'm starting with 12. What can I add to 12 in order to get zero? This is called the additive inverse property. Okay, an inverse will give me zero when I'm adding, and when I'm multiplying, I want it to give me one. So notice here, I started with 2 thirds. In order to get one, I have to multiply 2 thirds by its reciprocal, right? I don't know if you guys remember that. If you do this, 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 over 6 is equal to 1. So when we're doing multiplicative inverses, I am going to flip it, right? I'm just going to flip and multiply, and I'll get 1 out. Uh, and if I multiply by 0, obviously, I'm going to get a 0 back out. That's just called, I think, the 0 property, actually. Uh, not too worried about the, the name, but we know that, that that to be the case. Couple more terms, you guys, and then I'm going to have you guys do a couple of these practice problems, and then I'm going to get you get you going on some homework. So the commutative and the associative properties. So the commutative does not matter in what order you add or multiply numbers. Okay, so if you, this is the commutative and associative properties of multiplication and addition. Very important, multiplication and addition. These do not apply with subtraction, and that the reason for that is. Whenever I add two things, for instance, uh, I'll just do this up here. If I add two plus four, I will get six. If I add four plus two, I will also get six. But notice what happens if we go into subtraction. Two minus four is equal to negative two, and uh, four minus two is equal to positive two. Notice we get two different answers if we switch up the order in subtraction. So since order doesn't matter with addition and multiplication, we can make these rules. But they do not apply when we're dealing with subtraction. All right, so very important. So this is add or multiply. We have a commutative property. The commutative property just says I can shift things around. So I like things that add up to 10. So that's what I did here. Like if I have something like this and I'm trying to do this mentally, I'm going to group the 4 and the 6 together because that's equal to 10 and the seven and the three together because that's equal to 10. So I can do that easily in my head, right? I can see that that is 20 now. Um, or like if you're multiplying, maybe you wanna get a 10 out by, by multiplying. So notice how I grouped the five and the two together, that's equal to 10. And then I can multiply the seven and the four together, that's equal to 28. And then multiply those two together, right? So that's the commutative property. I can switch the order. The associative property uh, is kind of the same thing. This is grouping when you add or multiply though. So I'm gonna, it's kind of similar in that um, uh, we're still kind of grouping, we're moving things to group. But yes, associative just says you can associate with whoever you want if you're adding or multiplying. Okay, so I can, I can associate four and six together, seven and three together, five and two together, seven and four together. They're very related properties. And again, it's just important that, you're, that you know the rules, not necessarily that you know these names, all right? So hopefully these rules are making sense. So guided practice, this should be in your notes. If you guys have your notes, uh, it says, if you buy a couch for $300, a rug for $25.50, a lamp for $30.50, $30 and a table for $50, can you find the total using properties that you've just learned? Okay, so what I like to do is I like to combine things that are easy to combine, okay? so. What started out as a problem that looked like this, 300 plus 25.5, uh, 2550 plus 3050 plus 50, I can now group these guys together and then group these guys together to make my addition simple in my head. So if I group the first two together, 300 plus 50, Okay, and then I can add that to 2550 plus 3050. I could do these in my head. 300 plus 50, 350. 2550 plus 3050, that's not as easy to do in my head, but I know 25 plus 30 is 55, and then I have another dollar there, so 56. 
right? So then uh, if I add those together, I get $406. All right, so uh, this is in your guided practice in your textbook as well. So I think they let you, they kind of show you guys how to do a couple more problems like this if you want to get some practice with these before you start your homework. And then uh, your, uh, some more from your guided practice. This is example three. Notice they're just having you use these rules again. Uh, it's difficult to multiply 2.9 and 4 together. I mean, we can do it, but it's difficult. Think with these things, like how can I do this in my head? An easier thing to do would be take 2.9 multiplied by 10. Okay, anything multiplied by 10, we just move the decimal one place to the right, right? So 29 is what I would get if I multiply 2.9 by 10. And 29 times 4 is a little bit easier to think about. Um, now, we can use a number of properties after this uh, to break this down further. For instance, we can break this 29 apart into two pieces, right? So I can call this 20 times 4, right, plus 9 times 4. All right, so I could do that using the properties that we talked about uh, above. Uh, we didn't really get into this too much. The other thing that the other thing you can think about is you could just take 30 times 4 and then subtract, you know, four of those numbers from that as well. So there's multiple options for doing this. 20 times 4 will give you 80. And then 9 times 4 will give you 36. Should be able to do that in your head. Then if you add those two together, okay, I, I believe what we'll get is 116. And we're done. So what I would encourage you to do is to pause the video, see if you can use one of these um, rules that we talked about to figure out 3B, okay? So for 3B, and then I'll do it right here for you. What I would do is, for 3B, is I would try to get rid of this third thing, all right? So the easiest way to do that is to actually multiply by 3. Notice what happens if I take 5 thirds and multiply it by 3 over 1. Notice that the thirds on the bottom and the three on the top cancel. I don't know if you guys remember that from previous math. Uh, but this is just equal to five, right? So that's cool. That's equal to five. So now I have five times 25 times two. All right. Doesn't matter the order in which I multiply this. So I think I'm gonna do this one first. 25 times two is 50. 50 times 5 is 250. So what they're trying to get you to do, you guys, is to use properties to like rearrange things to, to make them simpler or easier to even kind of maybe do in your head, okay? There's nothing wrong with typing this into a calculator and multiplying it all out, but if we use these properties, we can do things in our head a lot easier. Okay, lastly, we're going to plug in a few values to a problem. So it says evaluate this if A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in first. Okay, so 4 times A, A is 1. We're going to substitute the 1 in for A. Okay, we'll use some of our new terms here. And then we're going to add 5 times 2. We're going to substitute that 2 in for the B. Okay, and then we'll substitute the 3 in for the C. So minus 2 times 3. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and simplify this down a little bit. This is gonna be four plus 10 minus six. All right, four plus 10 gives me 14. 14 minus six gives me eight. All right, so that's all they want you to do is substitute in and then solve using your order of operations if you need to. All right, guys, don't worry about this homework. I think I have a homework sheet for you. See you guys in class.